So I'm going to continue from where I left off yesterday, uh, last yesterday, last week, and uh, continue sharing on the particular subject, what on earth is happening. Um, just to recap, uh, I said, obviously, the bad, there is bad news, which is what the enemy is involved in. And we just read that uh, scripture. Uh, the Asif actually says that he looked at the wicked and, and how they were prospering. And we could look at that and go, well, how come their portion seems to be lighter than ours? You know, why is it that they don't seem to be troubled? I mean, here I am worshiping God, saving, you know, uh, doing what I need to, honoring his name, etc. And you look at them across uh, the path and they don't seem to have the same portion. The earth is the Lord's and everything that is in it. And everything that lives in it, that's Psalm 21 verse, uh, 24 verse 1. Psalm 115 verse 16 says, The highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to mankind. So what is happening on earth is exactly God hasn't lost sight, as I said last week. He hasn't lost sight of what's going on on, on earth. It's not like he's distant, but he's escaped. And he said, you know what, I can't cope with this pandemic I'm out of here. I'm leaving them up to themselves. We do not have a God who's distant. Uh, the portrayals of God sitting on a cloud, reaching out with his finger is total nonsense. Our understanding is his word. Emmanuel means God with us, not distant at all. So his very name and his nature means that he is with us. So what is happening on earth? God is still very active. He's still very, very much involved in mankind. The Bible clearly says that it is his desire that none perish, but all come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But we also know the enemy is very active as well. As much as God is active, he's called the God of the world. And now let me again clarify the, the earth and the world, as I said last week, is completely different. The, the world is a system, an understanding, a thought, a, 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 a thought pattern. That's the world. That's why we are not part of the world. We're not part of the thought pattern. We are, part, we are on the earth, but we're not part of the world and the world's thinking. I said last week that um, I believe what's happening on earth is that there is a, a beginning of things. If you've read the book, The Tipping Point, um, the, the, the writer actually speaks about a, a time in history where things are starting to tip, where things are actually running out. Time's running out, resources are running out, and as a result, um, a, this is a beginning or a new epoch or time where it's a time of great sorrows. That's what it says in Matthew chapter 24. Uh, uh, in uh, Re Romans 8, 22, it speaks about the world, world uh, the whole of creation growing together, groaning, groaning under the weight of what is actually happening. I said that men's hearts, according to Luke 21, are fainting. That's what's happening on the earth more than ever. There are more increases of, 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 uh, of the threat of violence and the threat of pandemics and the threat of economic uh, um, uh, failure. As a result, men's hearts are actually failing. They said in the first depression, there were many, many men, many men who actually committed suicide as a result of the first depression back in the 30s and i do believe that's happening more and more there seems to be an increase uh, of the manifestation of an unseen world where there's this direct confrontation no longer hidden direct confrontation of of the demonic and the unseen realm coming out uh, and there's a confrontation between light and darkness as i said last week there's signs in the heavens as we know as there is signs on the earth and you we we know those things and that i also started to share on the good news of what god is actually doing and this is how our hope is what god is actually doing on the face of the earth we don't lose sight we do not lose sight of the fact that god is very very present a very present help in trouble is what the psalmist actually says i said that the kingdom of god is advancing we read that more and more and we hear of that more and more we hear of good news uh, being spread across places where it was hard to reach. There's an organization in, in Cambodia that minister amongst particular uh, hard to reach places. Their organization is called 
um, um, hard to reach place ministries where they are seeing more and more people turning to Christ than ever before. Um, people having dreams and visions and, and it's been, uh, the gospel is now being spread through mass media. It's very easy to actually have a, a satellite um, television set, as I said, uh, in a country like Iran, which is actually illegal to have, yet they cannot seem to stop the gospel coming across the airways, the preaching of the gospel. Many missionaries are being raised up, as I said, as well uh, from these nations as, as perhaps missionaries are leaving or no longer going. God is starting to raise up people from within their own, uh, pe their own uh, people group themselves. And, and that's actually what's happening in the earth more and more and more. The, the fact that God is actually speaking and using, using many people. In Mozambique, uh, Suzanne and I met a man who got saved from, from a, a portion of Scripture. And he only had a small portion of Scripture, one small portion of Scripture. He got born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. And he started a church using that same small portion of Scripture. And God is using um, whatever methods and whatever means to raise up missionaries within the country because it's possible what's going to happen more and more are that doors start to close towards us as say foreigners aren't actually able to go to these foreign fields anymore i mean right now uh, it's not happened yet but uh, in the country that i particularly work in cambodia they've started to bring in more and more restrictions of international um, uh, non-governmental organizations in other words, they're trying to tax, they're trying to uh, um, restrict uh, more and more foreigners coming in. And it could be that those doors start to close. If they do close, God is still going to be working. It's not like we, it's dependent on foreign missionaries. It's dependent on the spirit of the Lord. That's what is actually happening on the face of the earth. Um, the word of the Lord is being spoken shared and read more than ever before i gave you the statistics last week and i won't go into that but it's exciting that people are turning to scripture more and more praying and 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 seeking answers people are searching for true truth uh just this week for two hours i i, I shared uh, on on a site and i had a number of really good conversations of people searching for truth searching for answers more and more people during a difficult time during the time of sorrows during the time of, of, of searching, they are looking for answers. And they would turn to sites like Peace, Peace with God or, or search, with, search for Jesus sites, which is great. Op, uh, 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 awesome, awesome opportunity for them to type in Peace with God and they find their way to Billy Graham's site itself. The other thing is, um, I do believe uh, that's happening more and more is that I believe that there is a, an outflow or an, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the face of the earth. And I want to read from Acts and chapter 2, right in the beginning, when the church actually started, Peter starts to explain uh, to the crowd who had actually gathered after the Holy Spirit actually had fallen on that, that small group of people. And this is what he actually says in verse thirty. Um, two. He said, this Jesus explaining to the crowd, he says, this Jesus God has raised up, of which we are witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, that's Jesus, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured this which you see today and here. You hearing what he has been pouring out. And I do believe what is happening on the face of the earth today is that th there will be an increase of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit more and more on the face of the earth. And that's something that we need to expect. And that's something that we need to actually look forward to, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit more and more. I believe that there is an, an awakening coming on the face of the earth. Suzanne and I have been talking about what really is going on on the face of the earth. There's been so much happening around. And I've been often saying, and I said this right in the beginning, no matter what is actually coming our way, whether it's a pandemic or it's a, a change of government or whatever is coming, 
I believe it's all going towards an awakening, waking people up. Because the bottom line is, what's happening on the face of the earth is that people have been lulled into the sense of security. They've, they've been lulled into a false sense of peace, a, a false sense of, of dependency on government or a government figure or political charismatic person. That's what they've actually been looking towards as their deliverance, as their help as their salvation. He's our savior. Um, he's the one who's going to help us get through. He's the one looking at a particular person, a particular party, or this particular program. And I believe that as those things are being dismantled, as, those, as we start seeing those things shaking and shifting, you know, with every shaking and shifting, as the Bible actually says will actually happen, I will shake the heavens and I'll against, once again shake the earth. With that shaking, people wake up. Think about it. If there was a massive earthquake that hit South Gloucester right now, those who are still asleep would be awakened, wouldn't they? Even if they've had a really, really difficult night the night before, they would wake up. And I do believe that as the Holy Spirit is being poured out more and more, there is coming this awakening. People are wakening up. And that's a good thing. And then, of course, as they wake up, we, the light, we, the salt, need to be there to help them, to talk to them, to share with them. You know, my, my family has a, an incredible testimony of this. My, my brother and I have never really had very much of a relationship at all. But recently with this whole pandemic, it's like he's writing more and more to me and searching. And so I've been able to an opportunity to actually, there's like this door just really opening. Susanna had this conversation with this young man yesterday. He just phoned her up for some advice. 50 minutes later, they'd spoken about a number of things. And people are reaching out there. As they awaken, they're going to reach out. So what's happening on the earth is people are waking up. The promise of the Father, which is in Luke chapter 20, verse 24, verse 49, is actually coming to pass. And many times when the Holy Spirit is poured out onto all flesh, flesh actually responds different ways. We've seen that. We've seen how a person who's demonically oppressed, right, and the Holy Spirit is poured out upon that particular person, they respond, and, and that obviously that which is resident within them starts to react. A person who's hungry, who's thirsty, who's empty and the Holy Spirit gets poured out, pour out, out upon them, may have a completely different response. We've been in meetings where there are people weeping. Across the aisle, there's someone jumping for joy. There's another person bent over in absolute worship and adoration in the same meeting. So we cannot say one fits all. In other words, when the Holy Spirit is poured out upon all flesh, that scripture in uh, the book of Acts, the promise of the Father, and I believe it's going to happen more and more. We need to be ready to understand that there will be different reactions. There'll be some who will run away. I was in a meeting once sharing the gospel, and we were going to ask the Holy Spirit to fill, fall, fall upon people. And a lady bolted. She literally ran out the door out of fear. There will be people who respond in fear. But that won't stop the fact that the promise of the Father is going to be poured out more and more. So I am a very firm believer in the promise of the Father. And the promise of a Father is, is a promise of comfort. He will comfort his children. In Luke eleven thirteen, it says, Then you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit, a good gift? I believe that more and more that the Father's good gift, the goodness of God, is going to be poured out even upon people, even if they don't recognize it. That's what's happening on the earth today. Yes, we've got bad news. Yes, it's difficult times. But despite that, the goodness of God is still going to be poured out. I believe that with all my heart, all my heart, the peace of God being poured out upon people. And they will awaken. They will awaken to, re to, to realize, my goodness, this is something I've been looking for and longing for all the days of my life. And here it is. The Father revealing himself, his nature, his kindness, his love. Listen to Romans chapter 5, verse 5. It says, 
Hope does not put us to shame. Wow, that is so beautiful. Hope does not put us to shame. In other words, right there, it's not that God shows up in the earth and goes, I'm here to shame you. I'm here basically to bring tremendous condemnation. Do you remember what Jesus says in John 3, verse 70? I did not come to condemn the world. So hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. In other words, his love is being poured upon us. You know what the world needs more than ever today is not another charismatic leader standing up and saying, I've got all the answers. It's the love of a father. That's what the world needs to needs right now more than anything else. The love of the father. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, it says, love never fails. Never, never fails. That's That you can write on your heart. People will fail. They'll come and they'll go. Promises are failing. All kinds of promises that people make are failing. But even, even, even what people are actually saying today, it will fail. But love will never fail. So I believe very much what's going on in the earth today. I believe more and more there'll become an overflowing of the Holy Spirit. And as the Holy Spirit is being poured out more and more, I do believe what's going to happen on the earth is there's going to be more and more gifts of the Holy Spirit actually being evident. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1, Paul actually writes to the church and says this. He says, eagerly, eagerly desire spiritual gifts. Eagerly desire spiritual gifts. Gifts of the Spirit. In other words, gifts that come from the Holy Spirit, which are good. Every single gift that comes from the Father is good. It says there in James chapter 1, verse 17, Every gift is good. Everyone. Not one of them. Gift of salvation. You can look at the spiritual gifts. Everyone is good. So it's supposed to be used for good. Yes, I believe in the word of knowledge. I believe in prophetic words, etc. But it is always geared towards goodness. Always geared towards the good of the person. I mean, I remember meetings in the old Pentecostal days where a prophet would stand up and lambashed everybody and whip them and beat them and literally lash us with his so-called prophetic word and leave us totally condemned and, and empty. That's not a prophetic gift that is actually being used for good. Now, there is a word of correction, but even correction, think about correction, right? If you have a teenager or a young child and they are erring or they're doing something, you want to correct them for their good, right? Exactly. I mean, if Johnny keeps going into the kitchen with the, 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 the hot plates on and keep putting his hand on the hot plate and burning his hand and you have to go to ER each time, emergency room, you're going to try and correct Johnny, right? You're not going to prophesy to him and say, yay, yay, thus save Chris, Every time you go into the kitchen, yay, ye shall put your head. And there, yes, there, yeah. Well, you're not going to prophesy, you know, doom. And you're going to turn around and correct them and say, listen, Johnny, when you put your hand on the plate, it's basically going to burn you. And it's not good. I'm actually going to remove you and put a door here so you can't get into the kitchen so you can't burn your. That's good for him. Now, we may think, well, that's just. You know, that's wrong. We should never let our children, we should let our children do whatever they want. Yeah, knock yourself out. Anyway, Ephesians 4 verse 8 says this, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men, good gifts, good gifts from the father to his children. Every single gift is good. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 verse and verse 11. You can read these scriptures. It says, as each has received a gift, receive it, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's grace. I love that verse because that explains exactly what the gifts are for. And more and more and more, we need to see the gifts of the Holy Spirit poured out, out, out on a dying uh, lost world today more than anything that actually brings the grace of God to people. 
more and more. This is what the earth needs right now. They need men and women who are filled with the Holy Spirit, using the gifts of God that will not just bring glory to his name, but also bring grace to the hearer as well. I'm not covering up for sin. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying we come in and we say we love everyone and you can do whatever you want. I'm not talking about that. But the gifts of God, how God actually shows a person's life. I mean, think of um, the, the Chosen. We, Suzanne and I watched The Chosen again the other night. You know, the series, The Chosen. Watch it if you have the opportunity. And the scene with Peter meeting Jesus, where Jesus uses his boat, is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. How how rotten Peter was, and he was a scoundrel, and they, they actually portrayed him as working as, an, as a Roman agent, whatever. But the point of the matter is, is that when he catches, he fishes all night to pay off his debt, and Jesus uses his boat, and he catches this boatload of fish. The reaction of Peter is beautiful, because he falls at his feet, right? And he says, depart from me, I'm a sinful man, right? Jesus didn't do it this way, okay? I'm Messiah. I'm here. I'm here, Peter. Repent of your sins. You've done this. I saw what you did last week. You were with a harlot. You did this. You, you stole from the tax man. Da -da -da -da. List everything. Repent. You have repented. Now go and take your boat out and catch fish. Hmm. Think about that. He comes to him, shows him the goodness of God, the goodness of the Father, and as a result, the goodness of God leads him to repentance. Isn't that what scripture says? Leads him to repentance. And that's exactly what the gifts, and I believe more and more on the earth today, brothers and sisters, my understanding, the gifts are to be used to bring the grace of God. I'm not saying cover up sin, because right there, Peter realized, he saw the goodness of God, he saw the grace of God, undeserved, unmerited grace, unmerited favor given to him despite who he was. And he thought, I'm standing in the presence of something holy. I need to repent. I need to change my life. This is what we need on earth today. The gifts bringing glory to his name, not our own name. We don't need more people starting bigger ministries and, and making a name for themselves. We need his name to be glorified more on the earth than ever before. Second Timothy chapter one, verse six, Paul actually is encouraging uh, Timothy as a young man. He says this, for this reason, I remind you to fan in the flame, the gift of God, which is in you by the laying of our hands, stirring up the gifts the King, the King James Version actually says, we are to use the gifts that God has actually given us, not to allow them to be dormant. So what should be happening in these last days more than ever before is the gifts of the Holy Spirit should be revitalized in our lives, in our churches, in our community. If, and if you, you should be praying and, so, and saying, Lord, I desire earnestly spiritual gifts. Let me just give you two gifts, particularly, which I believe are very pertinent on the earth today. First gift, the gift of the word of knowledge. In other words, having a word of knowledge for another particular person. This can be used as an incredible, credible tool. I'm not talking about fortune telling. I'm not talking about gazing into some stars or whatever and telling people their future. However, people are very, very anxious, desirous to know what's going to actually happen. Sean Boltz, maybe some of you know, who's this prophet from the United States, operates particularly in this gift. I've, him and Kim Clement are the two people I've, I've seen in my, my lifetime who operated incredibly. Kim Clement was in Durban, South Africa, and there were 20, no, 12,000 people in the stadium. And he said, there's a lady here, her name is Lee, something Lee, and you have cancer and this, this, this. It was Bill Lee's wife. Bill Lee was a very good friend of mine. And he called Kathy Lee out of 12,000 people all the way to the front, pray for her, she got healed. That's a word of knowledge. Sean Boltz was in a meeting, I think there were 20,000 people in Florida recently. 
a conference called Descend, and he said, there's a young man from Philadelphia, and he literally read the man's mail. He said, God's given you this, and et cetera, et cetera. And the camera actually was able to find this young man, and the guy was ecstatic because the Lord actually gave him a word. What was that? For the young man or for the 20,000? It was for the 20,000. To demonstrate that God knows who we are. He knows the hair on our head. He knows where we live. He knows our address. He knows exactly what we need. And he can use the word of knowledge. It's not as fortune telling. It's not as a popularity thing. It's not as anything other than bringing glory to God's wonderful name. The second gift that I believe needs to be so more active in the earth today is the gift of faith. Now, I will be talking, uh, hopefully, uh, at the end of the month about faith. Uh, I'll talk about this at the end of the meeting. But there is what the scripture actually says called a gift of faith. You can read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Read the whole chapter. It's all about the gifts that were given. But there, Paul actually says to another the gift of faith, the gift of faith. This particular gift of faith is not the measure of faith. There is a difference. Measure of faith is that every man has a measure of faith, right? But let me explain to you the definition of the gift of faith. And I, I think the best definition I found is from Derek Prince. I don't know if any of you know who he is. Derek was a Bible teacher. I actually had the privilege of meeting him. And he actually said, this is what the gift of faith is. He says, it's a mustard seed of God's own faith imparted supernaturally into a person for a specific need at that particular time. In other words, it's an operational gift. The gifts in operational are when they are actually needed as the spirit enables right so it's not like we just it's used as the spirit actually enables us just like the gift of faith in other words it says there it's like mountain moving faith as you see in mark chapter 11 verse 22 and that says have faith in god now derek prince says that scripture is actually incorrectly translated or written in English, have faith in God. The actual way it should be written is have the God kind of faith. And if you have the God kind of faith, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed, and it will actually. He says, in other words, this is what Derek Prince goes on to say. The words you speak with this kind of faith would be as if God himself we're speaking remember god is the one who brought the very word in world into existence by speaking the gift of faith i've seen people operate in the gift of faith the one the one person i think operates incredibly in the gift of faith is rodney Howard brown they the lord spoke to him back in the year 1999 about doing a gospel crusade he gave him a dream where he actually met a billy graham and Billy Graham said to him, the Lord says, go and do a gospel crusade in New York. It's called was called Good News New York. And he went and he hired Madison Square Garden. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of it because it's very lengthy. But the bottom line is, is right from the time that that seed, that mustard seed of idea was planted into Rodney's heart, the gift of faith immediately started to operate. Why? Because to hire for eight weeks, Madison Square Garden is not a small, small thing. That's where the big things happen, Madison Square Garden. To get Madison Square Garden for eight weeks in a row was supernatural. To actually fund a gospel crusade. Now, a gospel crusade, Tony and I know, you don't take much offering up at a gospel crusade because there's sinners there, okay? So your funding must come from outside. The funding, the, the, every single thing. And they, this is the thing about, right, Madison Square Garden is basically in the shadows of the Twin Towers, right? They sent out, well, eight weeks, evangelists onto the street. 40,000 people got born again. Many of them, listen, brothers and sisters, many of them working at the Twin Towers that was destroyed one year later. Isn't that interesting? One year later, that place was actually destroyed. 
So we have no idea how many people gave their life to the Lord in that Twin Towers. Now, that is an incredible, an incredible, incredible testimony of the gift of faith. Here's another quick testimony that is always encouraging in the year 975, 975. In the, the country of Egypt, there were these Coptic believers. And it was ruled by a pretty ruthless Egyptian ruler that used to mock Christianity. One day he called uh, the, a, a group of believers to him and said to him, I want you to give an account for Mark chapter 11, verse 23. You know what Mark 11, 23 says? If you have the faith of the size of a mustard seed, say unto this mountain, be thou removed and it shall be removed. He said, if your God works, if it works, I want you to go to that mountain outside of, of Cairo and remove it. If you do not remove it, your God is dead. We will kill you all. 975. So this man, the priest said, well, what do we do? So he went to prayer. And the Lord told him that he will meet a one-eyed one -eyed shoemaker called Simon. Now, this is a true story. Some people believe it's a myth. I don't a one-eyed shoemaker called Simon. And he, that one-eyed shoemaker, Simon will give him instructions from the Holy Spirit as to what he needs to do because their lives were on the line, folks, right? Simon had a vision and he was told exactly what they need to do. They went to the mountain and they declared the word of the Lord for three days, fasted, prayed, declared the Lord. And three days later, while the Egyptian leader watched, an earthquake happened and destroyed the mountain. It's a fact, a known fact. Hallelujah. That is the gift of faith. Now, you can't operate in that realm. You can't go. And please don't go outside now and try and move anything, because that's presumption. I will talk about presumption in my course. So those two things, I do believe, needs to be happening in the earth more than ever. The gift of the word of knowledge and the gift of faith. Faith. Another thing I believe that is happening more on the earth today, apart from the Holy Spirit being poured out, apart from people actually uh, seeing an increase in the gifts, I believe there is coming and there should be coming a hunger for the things of God, a hunger like this divide. There should come a water divide. There must be a division where the, the righteous shine and there is this desire for more and more of him. People who press into the things of God, according to scripture, and they are satisfied. There should actually be in Christians a dissatisfaction, a dissatisfaction where we actually are. We need to be hungry, constantly hungry and thirsty. Blessed are those, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They will be satisfied or they will be filled or they will be fed. That's Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. People who press into the things of God. I believe that more and more on the face of the earth, this is going to increase. And it's again a sign of the times. Hungering for him. There's, that I was reading an article during the week. They said that hunger is a sign of good health, which I thought that's interesting. When I read further on, when you look at a person who's sick, what do they don't? They don't want to do what? They don't want to eat. They just want to lay there, lethargic. They just want to just say, leave me alone. But a, so a sick person doesn't want to eat. But a hungry person is actually a sign of a healthy person, hungering after his presence, hungering after the things of God, after what he actually has written, a hunger for righteousness. You know, I'm reading um, John Burke's book on um, Imagine Heaven. It's quite a big, lengthy book. A lot of accounts say so I don't read it all the time, but it's just so, so amazing of what one commonality that John actually finds uh, in interviewing these many, many, many people who had so-called experiences after death. The one thing that he actually came uh, uh, conclusively, and he's this is the book, it's a combination of commonalities, meaning he'll take commonalities of certain things and he'll record it. One commonality that they found more and more is that when 
those people came into the presence of the Lord, whatever, however they described him, light or a being or whatever, they did not want to leave. Every 100% of them, 100% of them, every single one of them said, this is where I want to stay. Some of them called it, I am home, I'm welcomed, I am loved, whatever they wanted to use, whatever language. But every single one of them, the commonality was, I do not want to leave this place. I don't want to be departing and separated from his presence. And that should be us. Even we don't have to have an NDE, you know, a near death experience to do that. We should have a desire within us. You know, the Bible says in Revelations um, 20, I think it is 20. Let me just read that. Uh, 22. It says in verse 17, and the spirit and the bride say, come. Right? Yes, we want Jesus to come and fetch us. Absolutely. I don't want to, I've said it over again. I don't want to spend an absolute second on this earth longer than the Lord actually wants me to. I have no desire. I have no kingdom here. They can have it all. I don't care. They can take whatever. They can have it all. I want to be with him. Obviously, until that time happens, I will occupy until he comes. But there should be a growing hunger and a desire within us that the spirit and the bride basically agree upon. There should be a, an agreement in your spirit because the spirit of God lives in you. And that agreement says, come. Even now, before you come in the clouds, come now. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, come, Lord. Come. There should be this welcome mat all the time. You should have a welcome mat outside your soul and your spirit. Come, welcome all the time. There should be a hungry hunger. As I, I shared this uh, in the coming of the Lord uh, two-part series about the, 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 the understanding of the bride and the bridegroom. You know, two people who want to spend the left, rest of their lives together. There shouldn't be, I mean, you don't want to spend another second apart from each other. That, I believe, should be growing on the face of the earth, not just among believers. But I believe that, 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 that scripture teaches that eternity is placed in the heart of each man, right? That's what it says. Eternity is in the heart of each man. As that awakening starts to happen on the face of the earth, people will start to say, you know, there's got to be more. I must be created by someone. I must belong to someone. There must be, uh, there's this disconnection which has come because of sin. I want to be reconnected. I believe more and more that as, uh, as, as these difficult days that we face, that, that people are going to start longing for that, to be connected, to be joined together. with, And it's, it's, it's a sense of God. The book of Acts, which we're going to be praying through, and hopefully you've been reading through. I've been, <laughs> it's, you can't see it, but my, my, I've been reading through it and making notes and putting 2021 next to every verse. And I think, wow, because we believe in God for, for this. I'll share that a little bit later. But we ask, I believe that what's going to happen more and more on the face of the earth is we're going to see the miraculous. We're going to see miracles, signs, and wonders poured out on the face of the earth. And you can say amen to that because miracles are irrelevant in heaven. Right? It's irrelevant. We need them here on earth. That's where miracles actually need to place, take place. God has never left this world without a witness. A witness of his goodness, his love. And he does this many times through signs and wonders and miracles. We just I spoke about Peter of how that was an incredible wonder, an incredible sign of God's incredible goodness. We saw that. You can read of modern day miracles. I, re I remember recalling uh, a, a group of students at a mall sharing the gospel, but they were worshiping and praying before they actually shared it. And a man walked past, just walked past them, and he got healed. He was actually healed as he walked past these people. He turned around and he said, something's different. The leader went over to him and said, what's happened? He said, well, I was like this. Now I'm like that. What happened? What spell did you put upon me? He said, we have no spells. We just preach the gospel. Jesus has healed you. 
the goodness of God. It was a sign to him. So obviously he said, well, tell me more. Tell me more was about the one who has healed you now also wants to save you as well. Many times in the gospel, you read of people who were healed. And then Jesus was introduced to them as the Messiah, introduced to them as the Savior, not the other way around. Oh, get saved, repent of your sins, then I'll heal you. Now, many times that's, yeah, that's, as I say, that happens to many people as well. But it often is God's incredible signs and his wonders and miracles are poured out. If you read the book of Acts, one of my favorite chapters is a chapter of eight, chapter eight. I mean, there's probably so many miracles in one small chapter. Look at verse six, multitudes of people listening. That's going to start happening more and more on the face of the earth, where people are going to start opening their ears and paying attention to what he is actually saying. In the same verse, it says they saw the miracles. Verse seven, it says that unclean spirits left them. A sign that the kingdom of God has actually come. I believe that's going to happen more and more. I believe as the demonic is starting to become more and more bra abrasive, not abrasive, uh, more bold, more out there. I believe that they actually are going to get more and more exposed. And people are going to turn around and say, I do not want that which has occupied me. So unclean spirits, lame walking, leaping for joy. Eight, verse 8 says there was incredible joy in the whole city. I, I, I mean, I believe, I mean, I think it was Reinhard who used to prophesy that whole cities would come to Christ. Whole cities. They saw it in Nigeria where the population was only, say, 200,000 people and 350,000 people would come to, to a meeting. So they were coming from other towns. Whole cities coming I mean, shaken by the power of God. This is something I do believe. I believe also that faith, as it says in verse 12, is starting to rise in many, many people. When people are, are preaching the word of God, there will come a sense of faith that will rise. Yes, obviously we know the enemy is also going to sow con constant doubt as well. The kingdom of God winning over the, those who are oppressed I mean, you read verse 13 where there was the sorcerer who actually came. I believe that more and more the key people, key people, we said this about Cranley Court, prayed for key people, whether it's a prostitute or a drug lord or a whatever, that they get saved. One person, just one person, as it says there, one man, Simon the sorcerer, as a result of him getting saved, people woke up and go, wow, if he can get saved, we can get saved. That's going to happen more and more. And I do believe this. And I'm, and I'm trusting God that, as I say, just the one key person turns around and many go, well, wow, I'll, I'll take note of that. You know, it's the supernatural poured out. There'll be people who, <coughs> excuse me, will have supernatural direction more and more. As it says in verse 26, it says, and the spirit of the Lord said to Philip, go down to the certain place, go down to, from Jerusalem to Gaza. And he went. Supernatural direction is going to start happening more and more on the face of the earth, where the Lord will say to you, do this, go there, and you'll have this encounter, this meets, this, this supernatural event. And these are things that we, as believers, need to believe. We can't be unbelieving believers. We have to have faith. And that's why I want to I want to do an eight-week course on faith. It'll build our faith. And then also in verse 40, it talks about um, a supernatural uh, tra travel. Supernatural travel. I mean, Bobby Connor, one of my favorite preachers, spoke about uh, one morning he woke up after a very interesting, he believed was a dream that he actually had, that he was in a South American country. And he actually went to this place and he uh, rescued this young lady from prostitution and took her to another place of refuge. And uh, he remembers climbing over in his dream, climbing over his wall and hurting himself. And, um, and then eventually uh, he woke up in the morning and then in the next morning he was showering. He called his wife and he says, something wrong with my back. And she looked, he said, you've got a whole lot of scratches all over your back. He said, well, what happened there? She, he said, I, I don't know. And then when he went to change and he found his coat, he loved a certain coat. There was paca hair, alpaca, which is only found in the South American country on his clothing. 
I believe that the Lord actually used the man during the night to actually do supernatural. It happened with Philip. It can happen to you as well. Now, I'm not saying that it'll happen to every single person, but the point of the matter is that we can expect more and more on the earth, the supernatural. Why not? I mean, why, if the earth is the Lord's, why should we just simply give it over to the kingdom, to, to the enemy and his world system? I mean, let us operate outside of that system and, and demonstrate what God actually does. I believe also a couple more points and then we'll have communion. Uh, I believe that despite the depression, despite the oppression, despite the, the mental, mental breakdown of what's actually going, God's going to pour out supernatural joy on his people as well, more and more. And we should expect the joy of the Lord because that's our strength. Better wine in the end. That's what it says. The, he'll save the best to the last. Better wine. John 2 verse 10. And I believe that, that, that his joy that he's, that he's pouring out on the face, will pour out on the earth, will be full of glory. It won't be a brief laugh, you know, a, a ha-ha and a hee-hee. It'll actually be something that wells up from our spirit. I had a many, many experiences like this. I, I was in Durban uh, where the, the spirit of God was being poured out in such a phenomenal way. And we used to go bar hopping uh, on a Friday night. Meaning we used to go from church to church to find out where, we're the, where the best wine was on a Friday night. And I tell you what, we had such a great time, Susanna and myself and a couple of friends of ours. We used to enjoy the presence of the Lord. And it was great because there were some phenomenal, phenomenal things that actually happened. And I, I never forget those days. Zephaniah 3 verse 17 says, the Lord your God is in your midst. In other words, here's another wonderful scripture that God hasn't departed the face of the earth. He's in your midst. He is with us, Emmanuel. The mighty one who will say, he will rejoice over you with goodness and gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will exalt you over you with loud singing. So guess what God, the one who loves you, is doing right now? He's singing over you and he's laughing over you. And may that laughter spill out onto the earth upon his people. May he fill us with joy. Psalm 126 verse 2 says, Then our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. May the Lord do great things for us. May he continue. What is God doing on the earth? He's doing great things. He's doing supernatural things. He's pouring out his Holy Spirit. He's given us a sense of his Father's love. He's filling our, his people to overflow, and that overflow is an overflow of joy. I just want to pray for each one of you right now before we have communion, this word over you. So just lift your hands where you are right now, even in your house. Just stop everything. Don't be distracted. Just lift your hands, and I want to speak into your very soul into your spirit right now, into your family, into your business, into your work, into your children, everything. I'm going to speak this word. Father in heaven, I thank you. I thank you for this word. What are you doing? What is happening on earth? It's you. It's all about what you are doing on earth. You said as it is in heaven on earth. I speak into this, the families that are represented here today each one of our families and even those who aren't with us this morning i speak into their very soul be encouraged do not be downcast do not be afraid do not be overwhelmed the lord is near he is in your midst he is mighty to save he is laughing rejoicing singing over you he is the one who rejoices over you with gladness he's the one who speaks deep love into your very heart so be thou encouraged even this morning i pray lord that you fill to overflowing your children this morning 
I pray, Lord God, that an overflow of joy, an overflow of laughter, an overflow of singing will come to your children this morning so that we will not be confused. We will not be overwhelmed. We will not be dismayed because we fix our eyes upon the one who loves us. Fix our eyes on the one who says, I start a good thing, I will finish it. I, we fix our eyes upon the one Lord God who loves us, who cherishes us, and who watches over us. I speak joy. I speak encouragement. I speak filled, being filled with the Holy Spirit into each person's family and life, even right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just receive that in Jesus' name. Amen.